Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody has had a great week and I hope that you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Students, in this class we are looking at an IELTS reading passage. Specifically, we are looking at a passage about painting a famous chapel. Now you will soon discover which chapel that is. Uh, everybody, this is a members chat class. That means you need to click the join button next to the subscribe button and become a channel member to join the chat. But of course, everybody is welcome to watch. And we will have an all chat class where everybody can join the chat in about two hours for the listening section, listening section parts three and four. Welcome Sarah, our chat moderator. How are you? Welcome Domenico. Nice to see students joining in. This reading passage and these materials are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. The reading for the general IELTS is different than the academic IELTS. Both the academic and the general IELTS, the reading section takes one hour. You get one hour maximum from start to finish. And you can use that one hour however you like. How, but you do have to remember to be systematic. Uh, academic IELTS will have three passages with 40 questions. Each passage will be about 700 words. General IELTS will have three parts. Part one and part two have two little passages or uh, ha three quarter page articles. And then part three of general IELTS is very similar to academic. So if you're a general IELTS student, and especially if you need a good band score for like an express entry visa, for example, then using academic uh, reading materials is a good idea. It will help you uh, for uh, part three of the general IELTS in a big, big way. Welcome uh, Bogdan and Rakwea. Nice to see you joining in. Uh, students, uh, for lots of reading materials and lots of help with the IELTS exam, aehelp.com. This is our website. This is uh, the site that we use for these live classes. You can join the premium version of this course by clicking the big red button just up there. Um, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access and you get all of our practice exams, videos, uh, interactive course and much, much more. So very well worth it. Uh, for general IELTS, check out uh, gieltshelp.com. It looks like this. Again, uh, click this big red button. The strategies are slightly different for academic and general IELTS, and we feel it's a good idea to keep these courses and websites separate. So for general IELTS students, go there, click there. Um, for instance, for general IELTS, especially part one and two, skim reading works a bit. It's more effective. Uh, for academic IELTS, it doesn't work as much. So, um, and there are very good reasons for that, which you can learn in the course. Okay. All right. Um, nice. All right, Domenico. Well, cheers to your cup of coffee. I'm having a cup of coffee to wake up a bit. It's 5.35 uh, in the morning for me. And I hope that wherever you are, you're having a fantastic day. And I hope that your weekend is off to a good start for many of you. Again, um, absolutely. All right. So uh, we have this discount code for the websites. Uh, D O T. Oh, sorry, D O nine uh, T Y. That will get you a ten percent discount on the websites when you're in the checkout. And uh, you can also get our apps. The apps will link to your web accounts when you download them from your app stores. Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. Our Instagram for vocabulary um, and uh, other uh, English learning materials as well as the schedule for live classes is IELTS underscore A Help, G IELTS Help. 
And if you have questions for me about reading um, English IELTS, uh, then you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Either of those will uh, get you in touch with me. And uh, if you want some hard copy books, some physical paper books, you can always go to Amazon and search for our practice exams. Uh, AE helps academic IELTS, GE helps general IELTS. All right, students, so today uh, we've got the reading, then we're uh, following reading with listening. That listening is going to be the second half of the exam, or the listening exam from last week, so it will be part three, part four, and it's for subscribers, okay? So uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, to the uh, YouTube channel, hit that bell button, get notifications, okay? It's a really good idea. All right, um, and uh, we release videos weekly on the YouTube channel and of course the full versions on the websites. <clears throat> this is um, the video uh, from this past week. We released it on Tuesday, I believe. And uh, this is a speaking practice video, so check that out. Okay. I'm an early bird, Domenico. Yes. For sure. Okay, um, so reading strategies. Let's get into it. Uh, first step, read the title and look at the picture if there is one. Uh, there isn't always a picture, but sometimes there is. Uh, and you should always read the title. Then, uh, when you read the title of the passage, uh, think about uh, what the article is um, discussing. Okay? So, this is the reading that we're looking at today. <clears throat> Here we go. And we have a pretty, pretty picture. Now in the aisle, it's, it's black and white, so you, you don't have color pictures, unfortunately. Especially here, such a beautiful picture. Okay, uh, reading, pa <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> reading passage three. Uh, you should spend about 20 minutes on questions 27 to 40. So each reading passage in the academic is 12 to 14 questions and you should spend about 20 minutes average of course on each because three times 20 is 60. Hi Yanni. Um, all right, so here we have a beautiful picture and very quickly we realize that this is uh, a painting on the inside of a religious building eventually we discover. Okay, um, so here the topic is uh, painting the Sistine Chapel. A lot of people think it's the Sixteen. It's not Sixteen, it's Sistine. Um, so painting the Sistine Chapel. Okay, so you read the title and you think about it, right? So you think, well... What does that mean? Okay, so think about the what, why, how. So um, members, let's get into it. Let's turn on your thinking caps. It means let's get your brains going, okay? So turn on your thinking caps. Means get your brain working, okay? So here the title is uh, Painting the Sistine uh, Chapel. Okay, so um, what is this? So what is this? Uh, it must be, here's my answer. So just think about your answers. Try to answer in full sentences. Um, don't spend too much time doing this. So just the first thoughts that quickly come to your head. So it must be a famous painting 
on the inside of an old building, likely a religious building. Right? Okay. Um, why talk about it? So why discuss uh, such a painting? And students, the why question is a very important question. Really do practice thinking about and answering these why questions because that's the key to philosophy, right? Why? Um, in philosophy, they even say reasoning, right? Um, so reason, reasoning, it's the uh, foundation of uh, philosophy and um, if you think about the word reason it's the response to the concept of why right so really focus on developing your conceptualization of the why questions and answers right so Raquea says because it is unique Yeah, I agree, Raquea. So the first thoughts that come to mind is because it is unique, it is beautiful, it is difficult to create, okay? Sarah says it's in Rome. Macron says it might have political, economical, religious importance. Political, economical, uh, religious. And I would probably say, um, uh, Macron, uh, cultural, right? Cultural and historical. Okay, good. And then you think how. So how did this painting come about? Um, it was likely uh, painted by a master um, with much effort invested. Okay, good. Sure. All right. Um, so jumping back to the passage we've got some ideas around this now right members so painting the sistine chapel okay very impressive painting we can see that from the picture even if it were black and white we could make out that it's a very impressive painting and then our next step is to look at the question so we can see that the passages have uh you know five six seven paragraphs and then they're followed by two, three, four question types. So here uh, we have this question, complete each sentence with the correct ending below. So it's a sentence completion. And we have six um, question starts or sentence starts. And then we've got well, maybe nine um, endings. The endings are not important for us right now because we don't know what is the correct answer and which are false answers. So for right now, we just focus on this part here, okay? We just focus on the uh, start of the sentences just to get a bit more idea of the passage because all of this is in the passage. So students, this is reading, so make sure to read with me as I'm doing this. Don't just listen. Don't turn it into a listening lesson only. That's coming up after this class, okay? So uh, here we go. Uh, the Sistine Chapel is, okay, it's kind of like answering the what question, right, that we started with there. Um, Michelangelo had been concerned with his. Okay, so if you know Michelangelo, you know he is considered to be one of the greatest artists and painters in history, um, as well as an architect, so a very, very talented individual. If you don't know Michelangelo, that's okay. A logistical problem Michelangelo faced was. All right, so from this 29, I know that it was challenging uh, to create 
this painting of the Sistine Chapel. Unpainted areas of the chapel. Hmm, okay. A common misconception is that. Okay. A misconception, if you don't know the word, don't worry about it. If you're practicing at home, then you should write it down when you see new vocabulary. Misconception. And then write a definition for it. Okay. Uh, misconception would be like a misunderstanding. Okay. Um, so that's misconception, misunderstanding. It's a wrong way to conceive or understand a situation. Okay. All right. Uh, four years of working in uncomfortable conditions meant that Michelangelo must have had something. Okay, uh, then we have some multiple choice. Now, multiple choice for reading, just focus on the question only. Don't worry about the choices. Uh, the choices do not help you with understanding the passage. In fact, they will confuse you. So just focus on the question. Um, why was plaster laid each day? Okay, now here I have the strategy a little bit for you. So this part's not given. This is paraphrasing the question, okay? Because questions are usually statements in the passage. So what you want to do at home when you're practicing is write this down. And uh, during the real exam, you need to think about this in your head. So plaster was laid daily so that, okay? That's more likely the way you will see the information. What did other fresco painters do that Michelangelo did not? Okay, other painters did this, but Michelangelo did not. All right, so a little bit of comparison. The Sistine Chapel has survived to modern day because. So that's a statement, so I leave that as a statement. And then I have some yes, no, not given questions. Now, yes, no, not given, true, false, not given. Just leave those until the end of the passage because, well, we have no idea what is true, what is false, what is yes, what is no, and what is not given. Welcome, Jane. Nice to see more students in the class jumping in. Okay, so now that we have an idea about this reading passage, it's time to read, and read we shall. So uh, one really useful tool that we give you in our IELTS premium course is the reading audio, which helps you with reading fluency, English pronunciation, and much, much more. So make sure to use that. So students get ready to read with this British speaker because you're going to read after and we're going to go through the passage together after and find the answers and learn some more strategies. So this is CD6 track seven in your course. So we're going to hop over to that. It's also a bit of warm up for the listening uh, class coming up after this one. So again, you click this big red button to join the premium package that's just right above my head there. Once you do that, um, then you have your My Student account. And in your My Student account, you have your computer-based IELTS practice exams, your full interactive course, um, the PDFs, uh, lesson study plans, and then you also have all the videos. And after the videos, you have the audio CDs. So here, uh, we go to audio CD six because it's the sixth exam. And then we go to reading passage three, which is track uh, seven. So here we go, everybody. Uh, read with this person, keep the same pace, read nice and loud. So aloud, I'll show you with the first paragraph. Uh, what I mean, okay? Here we go. Painting the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine, Sistine Chapel, Chapel named, named after, after Pope, Pope Sixtus, Sixtus the, fourth, the Fourth, who directed, directed its construction, construction, is one of the, most, one of the important most important sites in all of Roman, Roman Catholicism. Catholicism. 
Located within the Vatican, the seat of papal power, the Sistine Chapel has been home to the papal conclave, the process of electing a new pope, since its completion in 1480. It wasn't until 1508, however, that the ceiling of the chapel took on its famous frescoes from the hand of Michelangelo. Until his work on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo had primarily been a sculptor. In fact, he was hesitant to begin work on the project due to his lack of experience with frescoes, the name given to a painting on a wall or ceiling, usually watercolour paint on fresh plaster. The Pope was adamant, however, and in the spring of 1508, Michelangelo began the work. The first problem with painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling was its extraordinary height. Reaching almost 70 feet above the chapel's surface, the ceiling would be incredibly difficult to access. To reach it, Michelangelo devised a series of scaffolds that attached to holes in the walls of the chapel. To this day, there are still unpainted areas of the chapel corresponding to the points at which the scaffolding attached to the walls. Unlike Hollywood portrayals, Michelangelo did not paint the ceiling whilst on his back. Instead, he painted in an upright position. This resulted in rather extreme neck soreness from constantly working with his neck craned into an uncomfortable position. Michelangelo even wrote a poem detailing the difficulties he encountered. It is a testament to the physical prowess and mental fortitude of Michelangelo that he was able to complete the project. Four years of physical and mental anguish must have been truly unbearable. Painting frescoes is a labour-intensive task. Because the plaster must be fresh, this necessitated that fresh plaster be laid on every single day for that day's paintwork. This section of plaster is called a gionata, and the edges between gionate are still visible today. In fact, these visible section demarcations give a great idea of how the work progressed from day to day. While most fresco painters used a pre-made drawing of the day's work to stencil onto the plaster, therefore making the painting easier, Michelangelo painted directly on the fresco. This is perhaps the most impressive aspect of the fresco. Every day Michelangelo continued the back-breaking work under continuous pressure from the reigning Pope, Julius II. In addition to its beauty and majesty, the masterpiece has passed the test of time. Painted over 500 years ago, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel has survived remarkably well. All of the credit for this hardiness goes to Michelangelo, who was painstaking in his pursuit of perfection. If a section of plaster was not exactly to his standards, he would start over. He must have known that his work might last for centuries, and he wanted to make sure that it did. The quality of the plaster work is germane to the longevity of the work. Paint can be restored through cleaning but if the plaster fails, the work is lost. Only a very small section of the ceiling has failed. In 1797, there was an explosion at a nearby gunpowder depot, which caused a small section to chip away and fall to the ground. There was also some minor restoration work done on the ceiling in the late 20th century. Restoration experts meticulously removed layer upon layer of soot, grime, dirt and other deposits. This made the fresco much brighter and more vibrant, and resulted in a fresco much closer in appearance to how it would have appeared at the time of its completion. Interestingly, the restoration also involved removing the fig leaves which covered Michelangelo's nudes. These fig leaves had been ordered in the 1560s by the very conservative Pope Pius IV. Despite its record of hardiness, there are concerns about the well-being of the ceiling moving forward. Millions of tourists visit the chapel every year, and this traffic has a degrading effect on the paint, as well as the structure of the chapel. While restoration on the paint can periodically be done, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to restore damaged plaster. While Michelangelo's work has stood the test of time so far, it is unclear how many more centuries his masterpiece will last. All right, Currency. Students. So that is uh, passage uh, three from exam six reading. Okay. 
Domenico says it resonates with me. Yes, Domenico, because you are in Italy, and that's exactly where the Sistine Chapel is as well. Okay, um, so now uh, what I would like to do, members, is give you a chance to read so that we can get into uh, this passage in a bit more detail, have a better understanding of it. So for that, I will ask you to volunteer, and for the volunteering, we will use the uh, student partner speaking function in the website. Um, by the way, for those of you who want to book a speaking interview practice with me, you can do that with the yellow button that's just underneath. And uh, for those of you who see this um, red uh, button here, you can book uh, IELTS at home exams through the website, the official exam. There you go. Um, so, uh, a lot of you members know how to do this. Go to aehelp.com, okay? www.aehelp.com. Uh, log into your account and uh, then click on Student Partner Speaking. And I will get you to help me read a little bit here and we'll talk about the contents and the information and a little bit of strategy of how to understand each paragraph so that you really can do uh, the reading and the questions in 20 minutes effectively okay so once you're in the um the chat interface you'll see some of your fellow students in here as well i see uh, macrand in here i see domenico divianchi uh, so if you are a member a uh, premium member or a channel member go ahead and uh, volunteer okay all right uh, let's start off with Makrand today. Let's see how Makrand is doing. Are you ready? Okay, Makrand. Yes, I see you. I don't know, Makrand, if we've had a chance to interact yet, but this will be a good one. Sarah's put the instructions in the chat, so you can check that out. Hello, Makrand. I thought I heard you pick up. Can you hear me? Makrand, are you there? I kind of hear some movement or static on the other end there. It sounds like you've made a connection. I'm not sure about your microphone or your setup. Okay, Makran, try to check out what's going on there because it sounds like you're connected. It just sounds like your microphone's not working or not enabled in your browser or um, maybe some other aspect there. Okay. Okay, so check it out, Makran. Check out what's going on there and then we'll circle back. All right. Um, let's uh, jump up to uh, Domenico here. Domenico. Are you ready? Yeah, Makrand, uh, try to uh, connect with one of the other members or one of the other uh, students just to test out your system, but it looked like you were pretty close there to connecting. Hello, sir. Good morning to you. Thank you. How are you, Domenico? Uh, well, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm holding a pick-me-up cup of coffee to keep me from uh, dozing off at the desk as uh, I have my belly full, full from lunch, you know. I, I'm affected by the, the post-lunch slump. <laughs> yes, I feel you. Um, and uh, I, I know Italy's got some really good food, so it's easy to it's easy to get that yeah. way, right? Um, yeah, you get that way, and and then you all you want to do is uh, to fall into bed and have uh, a nap, catch up with uh, catch up on some sleep. But you know, but the day I, must go I on. Try, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. better getting a move on. Yeah. It's better to get a, it's better to get a move on. Well, Domenico, let's do that. Let's get a move on. Let's read or start reading yeah. this passage. I've got it up on yeah. the screen. 
Um, so, uh, quick question. You're in Italy. Have you ever been to the uh, Sistine Chapel? Y yes, sir, I have. Uh, you know, uh, it's about an eight, an eight hour train ride. So, you can catch uh, an overnight train to get to Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, for example, you can catch a train at midnight. And at the Graco down, you arrive in Rome. Mm -hmm. And then you can check out the yeah, Sistine Chapel. Exactly. <laughs> All right, yeah. um, Domenico. I have, been, I have been many times. As a matter of fact, I have been many times to Rome. I have visited the Sistine Chapel many times. Okay, I, I was in Rome as well and I visited many places, but I didn't see the Sistine Chapel. There's just so many places in Rome uh, to visit. Like I've been to the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and yeah, a lot the, the, lots of other places, uh, but not the Sistine Chapel. You know, when, I, when I, you, you step into the Sistine Chapel, the first thing you can see is the high up ceiling, uh, which is covered with, uh, by many by many paintings and you you know you you can tell uh, uh, you can tell about stand stand up and uh, look up at the paintings yeah yeah and just imagine how Michelangelo did it all right um, Domenico start yeah. reading from the title painting the Sistine Chapel whenever you're ready go for it I'm ready so the Sist sorry the Sistine Chapel named the painting painting the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel named after Pope Sixtus IV, who directed its construction, is one of the most important sites in all of Roman Catholicism. Cafe, I, this is a new word. Catholicism. Located within uh, within the Vatican, this seat is a papal power. The uh, Sistine Chapel has been home to the uh, to the papal conclave. The process of elect of electing a new pope since its completion. Completion, so, sorry, in 418. It wasn't uh, until 508, however, that the ceiling of the chapel took on its famous frescoes from the hand of Michelangelo. Until his work on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo primarily I can't see that. It's coming. I can't see. I can't have a primary has primarily been a yeah had yeah had primarily been a sculpture. In fact, he was hesitant to begin to begin work on the project due to his lack of experience with frescoes. The name given to a painting on a wall or ceiling, usually watercolor paint on fresh plaster. The Pope was adamant, however, and in the spring of 508, Michelangelo began the work. All right, good. Okay, Domenico, uh, just a couple of um, uh, quick corrections here with your reading. Just repeat this word after me, Catholicism. Catho Catholicism. Catholicism. Okay, so now in the real aisles, if you get stuck on a word like this, don't yeah, try I mean, to read it or a, pronounce it's a new, it. It's a new word. It's a new word, so I didn't know how to pronounce properly. And if that happens in the real aisles, the the strategy or the tip is just read through it or just skip it because you don't want your brain to get locked or stuck on one word during mm. your reading, right? Now, um, the others with the dates. 
you don't want to get stuck. And remember, Domenico, in a past class I said you want to read the dates as two numbers. So just read this after me. 1480. 40, 1480. 1508. 1508. Okay, good. So um, if you had to summarize this uh, paragraph for me in one sentence, what is this paragraph about, Domenico? So, uh, so this the this first paragraph is all about the description and introduction to the Sistine uh, Chapel. So uh, it gives uh, the big picture of how, uh, or why this uh, the Sistine Chapel was constructed, was was built. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So again, remember, Domenico, keep it simple, right? So I think it was maybe Makrand who said this. So he said uh, the Sistine Chapel likely has some kind of cultural historical importance. Yeah. So it's an introduction. Yeah, it was dedicated. In, in fact, it was uh, it was dedicated to yeah Pope Sixtus Fourth. Right. So it's introducing the cultural historical foundation and importance of the mm. Sistine Chapel. Exactly. All right. Domenico, thank you for starting off this passage. Uh, have an awesome uh, rest of the class and, um, thank you, and hang in there. Thank All you, right. Sir. Bye for now, Domenico. Bye. All right. Um, let's uh, let's see if Makran figured out the issue. Um, let's try it again. Are you ready? We love giving new members a chance. Uh, make sure new members that you test the system. Let's see if Makran had a chance to test the system with somebody else and maybe it works this time. All right, Makran, let's give it a shot. Hi, Makran. All right, Makran, I can hear you. You sound quiet. You sound like you're far away. So maybe turn up the volume or get a bit closer on that mic. Is it better now? Uh, still a bit quiet. Oh, I don't know. What to try. I think it's the issue with the microphone. I'm going to turn up the volume on my end a bit more, and then we'll hear you a bit better. Try to get as close to that microphone as possible, okay? I'm holding it right now. Okay. All right. Makrand, um, firstly, where are you right now in the world? I am from Mumbai, Maharashtra, India. Mumbai, Maharashtra, India. Okay. Awesome. And why are you taking the IELTS? Actually, I wanted to like go for uh, abroad for my further studies, which is in the UK. So I wanted to complete my academic IELTS for the same reason. I see. So further studies in the UK. Okay. And uh, Makrand, um, what part of reading do you find the most difficult? Uh, the same one which we are doing currently, because like, but I have attended few few previous streams as well, so it helped. But I'm still facing some issues, like understanding the whole passage and then choosing the correct heading for the stream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the type of practice we're doing right now is the exact solution. So uh, what you want to do when you're practicing at home is go paragraph by paragraph. And after you read a paragraph, summarize yeah. the paragraph in a sentence. If you can't do that, you have to reread and you have to check vocabulary and see what's happening. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue this together. Um, read this second paragraph for me here, please, starting with uh, the first problem whenever you're ready. Okay. The first problem with painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling was its extraordinary height. Reaching almost 70 feet above the chapel's surface, the ceiling would be incredibly difficult to access. To reach it, Michelangelo devised a series of scaffolds that attached to holes in the walls of the chapel. To this day, there are still unpainted areas of the chapel corresponding to the points at which the scaffolding attached to the walls. Unlike Hollywood portrayals, Michelangelo did not paint the ceiling whilst on his back. Instead, he painted in an upright position, which resulted in rather extreme neck, neck soreness from constantly working with neck. From constantly working with his neck craned into, into an uncomfortable position, Michelangelo even 
wrote a poem detailing the difficulties he encountered. It is a testament to the physical progress and mental fortitude of Michael Angelo that he was able to complete the project. Four years of physical and mental anguish must have been truly unbearable. Painting fresh course is a labor intensive task. Because the plaster must be fresh, the necessitated that fresh plaster that this necessitated the fresh plaster to be laid on every single day for that every single day for that uh, day's paint work. This section of plaster is called Gionata, and the edges between Gionate are still visible today. In fact, these visible sections, the markations, give a great idea of how the work progressed from day to day. While most fresco painters used a pre-made drawing of the days to work of the days to work pencil onto the plaster, therefore making the painting easier, Michelangelo painted directly on the fresco. This perhaps the this is perhaps the most impressive aspect of the fresco. Every day Michelangelo continued the back breaking work under continuous pressure from the reigning Pope Julius II. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so here, Makran, you stop for a second and you think, okay, how can I summarize this in one or two sentences? So, what is this paragraph about? Uh, it is probably about how difficult it was uh, for Michelangelo to paint on a fresh pre fresco and also about what all difficulties he faced during it. Absolutely. Yeah. So here, if you're doing a list of headings questions, that, that would be one of the list of headings is difficulties of painting the Sistine Chapel. And that's what you would choose. So you're on the right track. Okay. Absolutely. Instead of thinking about the um, summary of the paragraph in the sense of questions like what were the difficulties faced by Michelangelo or how was it difficult for him to uh, think about the statement instead. Okay, it seems like a small difference, but it's a very important difference. So instead of thinking about like uh, the answer in this way, like this is about what difficulties uh, are associated uh, with painting uh, the chapel. So instead of this uh, kind of question concept, you want to think about the statement. Okay, because the statement will hold the answers. So the main difficulties of uh, painting the ceiling were, and then you can actually give it. So what were the difficulties? So instead of saying it's about the difficulties, give me the difficulties. So what were the difficulties? The main difficulties of painting the ceiling were what for Michelangelo? So it was like a painting on a fresh fresco is difficult in itself. So okay, simple. so we're uh, using the fresco, yeah, the medium, sure, yeah. What else? Oh, uh, having neck soreness. Okay, so bad body posture, right? So uh, mm -hmm. sore neck, yeah. What else? I think somebody yeah. in the chat is trying to give you an answer there as well, Raquea, by the look of it. Guess the height of the chapel itself, the ceiling, the height of the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So see how, because I'm not just thinking about it as a question, like this paragraph talks about what the difficulties, but instead giving the answer. So this paragraph talks about the, the difficulties, like the height, using the fresco, uh, painting freshly each day. So that way I get a much clearer idea of the details of the paragraph. So when I get to the question, I don't forget that. And then it's much easier for me to use that. So it seems like a small difference, but it's a very important difference. So when you're thinking about what each paragraph is about, think about the statement, not the question. Does that make sense, Makrand? Yes, yes. Definitely. Okay, so because you have the right answer, unfortunately what happens is when students think about it like a question, then they forget those answers by the time they finish the passage. Okay, so think about it like a statement. Okay, otherwise very yeah. good. And your reading is great. So you should be getting, you know, with your speed and understanding of this paragraph, I would say that you should be getting at least a band 7.5 to 8 in your reading, at least, okay? 
Thanks. I'll take that as a compliment. All right, Makran. Keep up the good work and focus on those right strategies, okay? Sure, definitely. Okay. Thanks, Makran. All right. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. If you can read like that, everybody, with that speed, like how Makran was reading, you should not be skimming and scanning. You should be reading, thinking, and answering. Okay. All right. It's very, very important. Okay. And thank you for the thumbs up, everybody, for supporting each other. That's lovely. All right. Um, Jian, let's take Jian. Are you ready? Hang in there, students. We've got a good number of paragraphs. Jian is a premium student. I'm not sure if Jian is um, a member of the channel, but definitely a premium student in our course. Um, let's give Jian a chance. If Jian is there, Jian, let me know. Okay, we're going to go. So what we're doing right now is we're going through the passage paragraph by paragraph. We're getting a clear understanding and then we're going to get into the questions, okay? That's loud. Hi, Jian. Hello. How are you? Jian, you can sound. Hear me? I can. Yeah, you also sound a little yeah, bit far away, so I'll turn you up a little bit. Uh, Jian, um, yes. can you tell us where are you in the world right now? Uh, I'm calling from the Philippines. From the yes. Philippines. Okay, Jian, and I see that you are a premium member of our course, which is fantastic. Jian, are you using the reading audio in the course to help you improve your reading? Yeah, yeah. You are? Yes, okay, yes. good, good, uh -huh. good. Go ahead, Jian. You Hello? wanted to say something. Yes, I'm listening. No, no. Uh, I uh, spend like less time because I'm I'm working in a day and the time, and uh, the I think there is a time var variation between here and in Canada. I think or in Canada, right? Somewhere oh, there's definitely a big difference in yeah. time between the Philippines and Canada. Like as of now, it was 10 p.m. or 10 in the evening here. Yeah, so no, there's a big, big difference. Um, when you have a chance, definitely use the audio in your course, okay? So when you're doing the reading, use the audio, or even if you're, you know, uh, doing some home chores, maybe. Okay, all right, Jian, uh, let's get into this. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and read this paragraph in addition to its beauty and majesty from there. Okay, Go ahead, Jian. Whenever you're ready, just start reading. Uh, where's the paragraph three? Right, it should be on the screen in YouTube, in addition to its beauty and majesty. Mm. Do you see it, Jian? Do you have you? Uh, do you have YouTube okay, okay. open? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. In addition to its beauty and majesty. The masterpiece has passed the test of time. Painted over 500 years ago, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel has survived remarkably well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the credit for this hardiness goes to Michelangelo, who was painstaking in his pursuit of perfection. If a section of plaster was not exactly to his standards, he would start over. He must have known that his work might last for centuries and he wanted to make sure that it did. The quality of a plaster work has germane to the longevity of the work. Paint that can be restored through cleaning, but if the plaster fails, the work is lost. Only a very small section of the ceiling has failed. In, 19, in 1797, there was an explosion at a nearby gun, gunpowder depot which caused a small section to chip away and fall to the ground. Okay, good. What is this paragraph about? Uh, uh, most probably it's about the... Um, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, circumstances 
that might happen during the painting during Michelangelo made the painting I don't think so I would disagree with you on that um, I, I I think there's if you okay so uh, if you look at the first sentence the first sentence is usually the topic sentence okay uh, can you read the first sentence again the in addition in addition to its beauty and majesty, the masterpiece has passed the test of time. Okay, good. There's a key piece of information there. What is that telling the reader about this fresco, about this painting of this ceiling? Uh, the beauty of the painting. It's not really about the beauty. It's what comes after that part, so after the comma. Um, here, the key words, if you read it carefully, the first words is in addition to its beauty, right? So it's emphasizing beyond its beauty. So it, I, instead of using in addition, I could say beyond the beauty and the majesty. The masterpiece has passed the test of time. What does that mean, pass the test of time? Uh, it passed the standard. Okay, good. So it means that this fresco has really high quality, right? It's yeah. made it with very good quality. So it's not, uh, it's it's not made in a way where it collapsed or it was destroyed easily. So it's still here. So if you ask me what this paragraph is about, I would say that this paragraph is about the quality of the work, and it's very high mm -hmm. quality because. Uh, Michelangelo was very careful to make sure that the plaster was perfect when he was painting. So that's what it's about, right? Now, um, do you have a study partner by any chance that you can study IELTS with? So somebody else that's learning IELTS with you? Anybody? No, 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 not yet, not now. I just uh, starting study like three days ago, I think. Okay, so it is a really good idea when you're getting ready for IELTS to have a study partner. And there are mm -hmm. lots of people just like you who are studying IELTS by themselves and they're looking for somebody to help them study IELTS because studying IELTS together can be very effective. So, you know, when you're in this um, page here and you see all of these other students, especially the premium students who you know are using the course, they also have access to all of these materials. So like Divyanshi or Domenico or Rakwe or Sam that's in here. Um, you can send them a message and you know you can say, hey, do you have some time in the week uh, to study? Maybe find somebody who's closer to your time zone, right? Um, yeah. And then you can study these um, reading passages together. So the two of you can read a paragraph like this and then talk about you know what it's about. So if you disagree, like I disagreed with you, then mm -hmm. you can figure out who's right and why are they right. So you can mm -hmm. explain to each other. It's a very, very effective way to learn. Okay, so okay. learning in groups is really effective. Okay, got all right, got all right. Um, Gian, thank you so much for volunteering thank you. and reading thank the you. paragraph. Thank you for giving chance. You're welcome, and hang in there for the questions and answers. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All Good right. Night. Bye for now, Gian. All right. Sounds like Gian's busy. Kids in the background. Lots of work, and I know life gets that way. But you can make this kind of fun, right? Okay, Yanni, let's see if you are ready to read a little bit more. Are you ready, Yanni? If you're there, Yanni, let me know. Okay. So thank you for the thumbs up, everybody. And again, I really, really do encourage you to reach out to each other, read with each other, back and forth, you know, alternating uh, reading a paragraph aloud and then discussing what that paragraph is about it sure makes it a lot more fun uh, Than doing it by yourself and it's very effective. Okay for learning. So I highly highly recommend it use the website in this way Hello, sir Adria. Hi, Annie. How are you? I'm doing great today. How about you? Hope you're feeling better. I am. I'm definitely I'm feeling a lot better. I'm almost back to 100%. So I'm good. Thanks for asking. Uh, that's great then. <laughs> All right, Yanni, are you ready to do a little bit of reading for us? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, uh, so I have it up on the screen here. Whenever you're ready, continue with, there was also some minor. All right. 
There was also some minor restoration work done on the ceiling in the late 20th century. Restoration experts may meticulously remove layer upon layer of soot, grime, dirt, and other deposit. This made, um, sorry, I can continue it's coming. because um, this made the fresco much brighter and more vibrant and resulted in a fresco much closer in appearance to how it would have appeared at the time of its completion. Interestingly, the restoration also involved removing the fake leaves which covered, uh, covered Michelangelo's notes. The fixed leaves had been ordered in the 1560s by the very conservative Pope Pius IV. Okay. Yanni, what is this paragraph about? Um, probably is the advantages of the restoration. Okay. Um, can you give a more, that, that it's a good answer. Can you make it a great answer? Can you tell me what those advantages were? Um, maybe if I um, can elaborate uh, the advantages of the restoration uh, for the each art, especially for the Michael Angelo masterpiece. <laughs> okay, close, but not quite. Okay, so that's what you want to practice, Yanni, is getting the so going from good to great. Your answer was a good answer, and that would definitely help you answer some of the questions in this reading passage. Now, to get uh, all of the answers correct or to get that band 8, band 9 level where you're getting all of the ideas, you want to make this, this a great answer. So you're right, um, it is about the advantages of the restoration in the 20th century. The trick to having a great answer um, to what the paragraph is about is your answer should cover as many questions as possible as concisely like when what where why who so if we look at my answer here it's going to be the restoration in the 20th century made the fresco more vibrant and restored the original nudes okay so notice how this answer uh, gives more answers to some of those questions, right? Like what they actually were. Um, do you know the word vibrant, Yanni? Mm. Uh, I, I forget, but I, I don't know. Vibrant means like more Again. colorful, more vivid, brighter, okay? okay? So you know how when you have a painting for a long time, it starts to fade and become darker and darker. Photographs tend to do that as well. We start to lose the color. When you bring mm. the color back, then it becomes more vibrant, okay? Um, for clothing, uh, companies that sell uh, washing detergents, soaps, they love to advertise that. They love to say like, use our laundry soap because it will make your clothes more vibrant. They'll be like when you bought them the first time, really colorful and bright. Um, so vibrant means colorful, bright in this case, okay? So just no, repeat after it, me, yeah. Yanni. The restoration mm -hmm. in the 20th century made the fresco more vibrant and restored the original nudes. The restoration of in the 20th century made the fresco more vibrant and restored the original nudes. Okay. Uh, keep reading. Let's finish it up. Um, continue, you mean? Mm -hmm, yeah, with despite its okay. record. Okay, despite its record of hardiness, there are concerns about the well-being of the ceiling moving forward. Millions of tourists visit the capital every year, and this traffic has a degrading effect on the paint, as well as the structure of the capital. While restoration on the paint can periodically be done, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to restore the match plaster. While Michelangelo's work has stood the test of time so far, it is unclear how many more centuries his masterpiece will last. Okay, good. Uh, repeat this word after me. Chapel. Chapel. Chapel, yeah. Uh, chapel. It's a, the, C -A, the C-H here is a ch ch chapel Okay, uh, Chayani, okay chapel. what is this conclusion about? Um... I think, okay, so 
in my opinion, it's like the importance of the restore restore the damage of the plaster. So maybe the Michelangelo work can stood out for a long time. Hmm. I don't know if I agree with you. I think there's an important word that's introduced here that we're missing in this answer. Um, the high, the part that I just highlighted for you, you'll see in a couple of seconds. Um, it's the the author is really trying to uh, emphasize a, a point here for the reader, and I think we've missed that with what you just said. Uh, do you see what I just highlighted on the screen there, Chani? Yeah, millions of tourists. Why does the author bring that up? Mm. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm tribal, sorry. Mm, that's okay, it's okay, that's why I'm challenging you. So millions of tourists visit the chapel every year and this traffic has a degrading effect on the painting. What does it mean to have a degrading effect on the painting? The meaning of the degrading effect? Mm-hmm, yes. Um, I think... Think about the word degrading, okay? Um, when you have a word like degrading, and this is um, an interesting strategy. So Yanni, I'm just using uh, this situation for you to help me explain this to all the other students. Degrading, right? Um, English words can be broken often into three pieces called the prefix, root, and the suffix. Have you learned this before? Yeah, I have been learned. Okay, I have learned this before. Okay, um, so in this case, what is the prefix of this word? It's D, right? So the first syllable, D, is the prefix, okay? What's the root? Yanni? What's the root of yeah. what's what is the root of the word degrading? What's the root word? Um, great. Great. That's right. And then the uh, suffix is the ing, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, the way that it works is the prefix is often some kind of a preposition. Okay. So. Prefix will be some kind of a, a preposition like to, in, at, on, or it will be something like negative, positive, together. Okay. Uh, the root is the key. That's the part that we need to know. Okay. So the key word. And then the suffix is usually the grammar form or the form of the, of the word. Okay. All right, okay, and th so there's logic here, Yanni. Stay with me. I know you're like, what is Adrian doing? What? <laughs> What's going on? Why did he do that? <laughs> It'll make sense in a second here, okay? All right, so um, here, let's try to figure out the meaning of this word. And um, sometimes, you know, words can be important. And in the listening section or in the reading section or especially in the writing uh, questions, if you don't know a word, um, then you may need to figure it out to pick up some... Um, some points. So here, um, the root word is grade. Um, what's a grade? Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, what does the word grade mean? Grade. Um, grade is just meaning the, um, the value. Yeah, the value or the level, yes. The value, uh, the level, sure. Okay, um, what does the prefix D mean? Like D. Mm, D. I mean, it makes like, um, makes in un unfailable, like in the post negative way. So, <laughs> D, means to, so. D means negative, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Um, yes, so D has this negative meaning. Just think of, uh, so when you're trying to figure out the prefix, you can think of other words that start with D, like decreasing, right? Decreasing means to go down, right? Instead of increasing, 
which means to go up. So D here means negative. So D grade means negative value, right? Therefore, this word plus this word will equal the negative value, right? Um, which is fine. So language is kind of like math in some ways, the English language, absolutely. So now if I go back to this sentence, has a degrading effect on the paint. So millions of tourists visit the chapel every year and this traffic has a degrading effect on the painting. So what does that mean now, Chani? How can we understand that phrase? So the million um so because of the million tourists visited the chapel every year so um the the crowds of the million make the value of the painting is lower exactly so it somehow damages the value of the painting right and now if we think yeah. about it and visualize it we can realize that oh yeah of course tourists taking all of those photos okay. uh, maybe some kids are trying to throw rocks at it or something okay. so it's it's damaging the painting right so degrading okay. effect here means to have a damaging the the suffix ing i think somebody's asking about that is um, just giving the uh, grammar form that it's a noun in this case a degrading effect or um, an adjective form okay all right so keep this right. keep this in mind yanni if you get stuck and you're not sure what a word means don't panic don't freak out think about the content uh, think about the prefix the root the suffix and you can often figure out with your level of english you can often figure out what that word means okay okay sir thank you for your advice yeah it's quite helpful for me Absolutely, and thank you for helping. When you have um, and when you have a minute, Yanni, and this is a tip for everybody, it's a really, really smart idea to do a little bit of research on the meaning of prefixes. So understanding the prefix can be really helpful. And when you go on the internet and you go on Google and you type in, give me the definitions of the most popular English prefix, word prefixes, then Google will say, okay, in, d, un, these are the most common and here are the definitions of what they mean. And learning those prefixes can be really useful when you're in an exam, okay? Okay, sir. All right. Thank you so much, Yanni, for volunteering mm -hmm. and I hope you have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. Okay, thank you, sir. See you. Bye for now. All right, that was Yanni and that was great, okay? Uh, fig is a type of fruit. That's right, Raquea. It's a kind of a shaped like uh, this. It's like that, and we often dry it out. Um, it's a it's a delicious sweet fruit from the fig tree. Yes, fig leaves I think look kind of like that, like that. That's a that's a fig leaf. Okay. All right, okay, let's take another volunteer here. Let's get into some questions and answers. Um, let's uh, go, uh, let's see if uh, we have some volunteers at the bottom of the list here. Rakim, one of our premium students. So um, here we go, Rakim, are you ready? Can you help me with some questions? Okay, here we go with Rakim. Rakim, if you're there, let me know. We'll do this. Yanni, that was really good. Thank you. Raquea, yes, I see you there as well. You're going to help me with some questions too. Um, let's see if Rakim is still hanging out with us, and then we'll get into some questions. I want to give, uh, I want to give students a chance who don't really get a chance to speak with us much. I don't know if I've ever spoken to Rakim. Hello. Hi, Rakim. How are you? Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Rakim, is this our first time chatting with each other? Uh, actually, yes, sir. But uh, previously, you called me once and there was connections. Uh, there was no connection. I see. All right, Rakim. Um, may I ask, where are you right now? I'm from Uzbekistan. Sir. Uzbekistan and why are you taking the IELTS to get a master's degree in yeah. what specialization 
Uh, actually, I'm now studying the history, pedagogical university, and I would love to continue this field as a teacher, maybe. Okay. All right. I got you. All right. Um, well, I will ask you to help me out with some uh, questions. And um, we're going to kind of start at the bottom. So with the last few, the yes, no, not given, that seems to be a crowd favorite for many um, candidates for the IELTS. So we'll start with those ones and uh, we'll work our way through it. Uh, I've got question 36 up on the screen here, but let's, you know what, let's read the instructions first. Um, can you read from do the following statements? Uh, 36, yes. Uh, yep, and just read the instructions first. So from do oh. the following statements. All right, I got. Uh, do the following statements agree with the claims of the writer in the reading passage? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Uh, if the statement agrees with the claims of the writer, yes. If the statement contradicts the claims of the writer, no. If it is impossible to say what the writer thinks about this, not given. Perfect. All right. So, and it's very important here that we're talking about the writer, not the reader. That ha that tends to be one of the mistakes that some candidates make, is they think that, you know, oh, I know the answer to this. So it's a yes, and then, but the author didn't talk about it. So. You have to be in the writer's shoes here. Okay, it's very important. Okay, number 36. Go ahead and read that for us, please. So, paint does not stick well to poor quality plaster work. Okay, good. Um, so, the first step when you have this kind of question is to figure out if it's important or not important because your first step is to figure out whether it's given or not given okay so the way to do these questions is um, computer logic so it's an if this then that so here what you want to do is you want to figure out okay is this information given in the passage or not given and the way to do that is to figure out its importance so do you think it's important to know whether or not paint uh, sticks to poor quality plaster work? Uh, I think, yes, it is important because it still stands uh, nowadays. And uh, it will, it would be re uh, resilient to stay a long time. Okay, good. So it is important to know that, you know, paint uh, sticks to uh, good quality and does not stick to poor quality. Sure. All right, so if, it, if you feel that it's important, then you can think that, okay, this must be given, right? Because it's important. So now we go to the next step and we ask ourselves, is it true that paint does not stick well to poor quality plaster? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, yes, it is uh, not uh, sticking to the uh, poor quality. Okay, so in your opinion, the answer to this question then would be yes, right? Yeah. So that would be the correct answer. Yes. Okay, um, that's fine. Now, sometimes what happens is students say, okay, well, I don't know the answer here. My answer is maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure if it's given. Uh, I didn't really visualize the sticking well part here myself, but I do remember that there was a paragraph which was about Michelangelo's attention to detail and his attention to uh, using good quality plaster. So if I want to check, right, and if I'm going to read this again, then I have to know where this was coming from. Do you know which paragraph? So where was this paragraph? Introduction at the beginning, in the middle somewhere, or near the end? Uh, it, were, it was in, in the middle. In the middle somewhere, right? So. Yeah. If we don't know, we can go back and check. Now, on average, in the IELTS, you have about 40 seconds per question. So if I already spent, like, let's say 30 seconds on this question, I would probably just leave this as a yes, 
mark that I'm not sure, and then go to the next one. And if I have time at the end of the passage, like I feel that, you know, I didn't spend a full 20 minutes, then I would come back to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so here, okay, we have the beginning, the first paragraph. Um, the second paragraph was about the height of the chapel, some of the problems with it. Um, and then um, here, um, I start kind of skim reading through the middle, okay, uh, where it starts to talk yeah. about the plaster. So because the plaster must be fresh, this necessitated that fresh plaster be laid on every single day for that day's paint work this section of plaster is called now I'm looking for this information of paint does not stick to uh, poor plaster right do I see it yeah. anywhere here um, not really okay all right yeah. um, so then I go to the next paragraph it's still the middle okay so in addition to its beauty and majesty the masterpiece has uh, passed the test of time so I keep going and I'm looking for this part about is it sticky okay um, if a section of plaster was not exactly to his standards he would start over okay but does the author actually say that paint does not stick to poor plaster okay not yet the quality of the plaster work is germane to the longevity of the work paint can be restored through cleaning but if the plaster fails the work is lost Okay, does that mean that paint doesn't stick to poor plaster? Mm, no, no, no. No, so I, so I don't see it anywhere, okay? So I would probably at this point, if I had this amount of time, change this answer. What would I change it to? It's uh, not given, it would be. Yeah, yeah, so I would change it to not given, exactly. It's a tricky one, it's a tough one. That's how we figure it out for sure. I usually don't recommend changing answers. So if you don't have time for it, just leave it. Losing one answer is not the end of the world. Let's go to the next one, number 37. Can you read that one for me? <clears throat> yes, of course. Uh, restoration results in the brightening of the fresco. Okay. Um, now, again, we figure out if it's important. Is it important to know the reason for restoring the fresco? Mm, yes, yes. Absolutely, yes. right? Absolutely. Um, so that's definitely yes. a given. Okay, restoration results in the brightening of the fresco, so it becomes brighter. Is that true or is that false? It's true, I think, yes. Absolutely, right? When And here, yes. um, so the IELTS exam does not lie, okay? So they use real facts, real information. And as we know, when we restore a painting, it becomes brighter. So of course the fresco becomes brighter. So you don't have, you know, the IELTS is not going to purposefully uh, mislead you or trick you, okay? To the best of their knowledge, they always um, give you facts, okay? So here it's a yes, I definitely don't need to search. This should only take me about 20 seconds to answer this question. Okay, go for number 38. Yeah. So uh, the fresco had been modified in the decades after completion. Okay, good. Um, is it important to know uh, whether or not this fresco went through some changes over the years? Yes, I think it's important. I agree with you. It's the history of the fresco, right? Um, yes. Did it go through any changes in the decades after its, com after its completion? Uh, after completion, um, it uh, stayed quite uh, long. Uh, I uh, heard it was about 500 years. Yeah, I mean, there were some changes though, right? And this is where visualization is very important when you're reading the passage. Um, so you're right, it's, it's maintained its original quality for many many years however there was some change that happened and it was very it was kind of a surprising change so if you're visualizing this especially you would really remember this um, do you remember the change that happened with it it changed and then it changed back mm, no actually I I can't I can't remember that, that was when the painting was restored when they did the restoration they removed something what was removed <laughs> Mm, no. 
Okay. I, <laughs> you sorry, don't remember I can't it? Remember. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I will help you with this. So when they restored it, they mm-hmm. removed the the fig leaves from the nudes of Michelangelo. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you I remember that you. part? Yes. Yes, yes, I remember. Okay. Who put the fig leaves there? What? Who put the fig leaves there originally? Originally, it was some kind of king, yes? Some kind of pope, yes. Pope, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, here, when it's talking about the, uh, let's see, where is it? Um, here. Uh, read this uh, sentence for me, Michelangelo's nudes. So now, uh, Michelangelo's nudes, uh, these fig leaves had been ordered in the uh, 1560s by the very conservative Pope with force. That's right. So Michelangelo completed the painting of the Sistine Chapel sometime in the 1500s, and he had, um, I think, Adam and a couple of the figures nude, so fully in their birthday suits, naked. And then there came a pope, and he's like, oh, no, no, that's too too much for everybody. Uh, we have to put some, some paint on that. Let's put some leaves on those guys. Um, so they did that, right? So um, here, yeah. again, you have to be careful, and this is where really visual reading is very powerful, okay? So here, yeah. uh, the fresco had been modified in the decades after its completion. It's given, you're right. Is it true? Yes, yes. Yes, it is with those fig leaves, right? So uh, you need to be visual and be very critical when you see this kind of a question. There's usually some purpose that's going on in the uh, test maker's mind. Okay, Uh, number 39. Can you read that for me? Uh, Proximity to humans has a negative effect on the sailings. Is it important to know that uh, people being close to the ceiling has a negative effect on the ceiling? Um, yes, I think it's important because it's given. <laughs> okay. It's pro- so, proximity. Yeah, proximity and, means closeness. So closeness to humans has a negative effect. So it's given, right? Yes, of course it's given. And is it true that... Um, the proximity to humans so having people around the ceiling has a negative effect on the ceiling on the ceiling Mm -hmm. Uh, i think it was given yeah i think it yes or okay good all right it is a yes and um what we want is not just to think but we want to be sure right like we want to be like yes i'm sure okay (laughs) and um here um, humans, okay, so what are these humans or who are these humans? What kind of humans does the author talk about? Think about the conclusion. Uh, the visitors, that tourists come there exactly. to visit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And remember that word that I was um, analyzing with Yanni? Do you remember what that word was? Where I was showing the prefix, the root, the suffix? Yes, 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 yes degrading. Degrading. Do you see that word in this sentence in another way? Uh, another way, negative effect, yes. That's right. Okay, there's that prefix root suffix, right? The negative effect, degrading effect, right? So tourists yeah. have a negative effect on the ceiling. Yes, it is. Absolutely. So this is just a very highly paraphrased sentence, which is that sentence from the conclusion, right? So that's how we know that that's a perfect match. Okay. Last one. You're doing great. Now you're confident. Now you know that that's the right answer. You're not just guessing, right? You know that 39 is the correct answer. Okay, number 40. Go for it. Plaster, which has sustained damage, is easily restored to its bright and vibrant original form. Mm -hmm. Is it important to know uh, if we can restore um, damaged plaster? Yes, it's important. Yeah, because the whole fresco is made up of that plaster, right? So it's important. Okay, so it's given. Okay. Uh, Is it true that we can easily restore plaster that's damaged? No, it's not easy. So the answer is? No. Good. 
and now you have a perfect score. Not given, yes, 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 no, okay? Yeah, thanks. That's how it works, <laughs> all right? Now, it, we're working on this together in teams, um, so it makes it look easier, but of course, it's a bit more challenging when you don't have me sitting in your ear, right? Um, so yes. <laughs> the trick here is that when you're studying the IELTS, and this is exactly what I was saying to Yanni, is you want a study partner, okay, Rakim? So if you have somebody yeah. else who you can study with, you want to go through the true, false, not given, or yes, no, not given questions with your partner, just like what we did, and then we can agree or disagree, right? Like, oh, it's not, maybe I'll say, oh, it's not important, and you'll say it's important, and we can talk to each other in English, of course, not a news bag. <laughs> why it's it? Why yes. it's important, right? So, um, so this is a really, again, a really good exercise to do in partners. These yes, no, not given questions, like how we were just doing it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, Rakim. Thank you for volunteering. Make sure to use your premium package every single day. Okay, and uh, keep coming back and keep volunteering. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks to taking me. Thank you, Rakim. Have a great rest of the day. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was Rakim. Let's give him a thumbs up. He was finally able to connect. That's great. All right, Rakwea, I made my promise and I shall not break it. Um, so if you're there, we'll do a couple more questions. Are you ready? Here we go. Thanks for all the thumbs up, everybody. Rakwea, if you're there, let me know, and then we'll do a couple of questions. We'll do a couple of questions. There's Rakwea. Hi, sir. Hi, Rakwea. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. All right, Rakwea. We'll just jump right into it with the first couple of questions, these sentence completion ones where we have to find the correct ending. Now, um, Rakwea, the, the right way to do these kinds of questions is to read the given phrase and then try to finish it with your own understanding of the passage and then we'll look for a match. So um, go ahead and read number 27 for me. Okay, the Sistine Chapel is. Okay, so when we see this, Rakwe, right, this statement mm -hmm. is looking for the what it is, right? Like, it's kind of yeah. like, if I think yes. about the question, the question would be like, what is the Sistine Chapel? The Sistine Chapel yes. is. So here's yeah. my question then, Rakwe, what is the Sistine Chapel? Uh, it is a fam famous painting. It's not a painting. The painting's inside the Sistine Chapel, but what is the Sistine oh. Chapel? Uh, Sistine Chapel is like a religious place or... Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, Rakwea, not kind of like a religious place, right? It's not some small church in some small village. It's a pretty important one, right? So you have to okay. emphasize it, okay? So with confidence, yes. Rakwea. So the Sistine Chapel okay. is an important religious building, right? Okay, yeah. For who? Is it for Buddhists? Is it for Hindi uh, religion? Is it for Muslim religion? No, it's for popes. For popes, for, yeah, for Catholics, right? So it's an important religious yeah. building for uh, Catholic popes. Yes. Okay, that's the right answer. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to see if we have a match. So any um, match there in the choices? Mm -hmm. So read all the choices for me. Read from A all the way to okay. I. Okay, the height, the height of the ceiling, mental and physical strength located in the Vatican provide evidence of Michelangelo's scaffolding, devised scaffolding, the Pope was adamant, one of the oldest Roman Catholic holy sites. He painted the forces while on his back in experience painting forces. I think G, one of the oldest Roman Catholic holy sites. Sure. So you go with G. Yes. And then, 
that matches yours and you keep going, right? Okay? Yes. All right, good. So we'll stay with that one. And then we go to um, the next one. So number 28, go for it. Read that one for me. Michelangelo had been concerned with his... Okay, what was Michelangelo concerned with when they asked him to paint this Sistine Chapel, according to what you read? He is uh, not sure about painting because uh, he is uh, uh, a sculptor, yeah. not a painter. So. Yeah, Michelangelo had been concerned with his ability to paint yeah. frescoes, right? Yes because he is a sculptor, not a painter. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, what matches with that one? Okay. Uh, the height of the ceiling, mental and physical strength located in the Vatican provide evidence of Michelangelo scaffolding device to scope the Pope was adamant one of the he painted the wall on his back. In experience painting forces I very nicely done, Raquea, and that's the correct answer. Okay, so that's how you do it. Raquea, you're on the right track. You can do the rest of them without me. And you'll get them right because you're doing perfect. So thank you so much, Raquea, for helping with that. I'm out of time, so I have to get going and get ready okay, for the sir, next thank class. Thank you so much but for you're... giving me at the last. I yeah. think I'm not here. You're very today. welcome, Rakway. And thank you for helping me show everybody how to do that question type, right? So the trick is read it, think about your own answer, and then choose the match. The big mistake that you know a lot of students make is they try to look for the choices before they think about their answer, and then they get confused. So you did the correct way. Rakway, thank you so much, and I hope to see you in the next class. Yes, sure, sir. Okay, bye. Have bye a for day. now. Bye, Raquea. All right, that was Raquea. Thumbs up. That was really good. All right, everybody. So uh, we're using the chat interface here on the website. Again, students, especially premium students, make sure to connect with each other, work in groups. It's very effective. To become a premium student, go to aehelp.com and click on this big red button here as we will be using this website in the next class and everybody will be able to join the next class. Um, we will be focusing on the uh, listening section and we'll be using the listening audio listening exam from the website. Um, so click that big red button up there. Uh, for general IELTS, it's that one. Click that big red button up there. Thank you members, thank you premium members, thank you channel members, you were awesome today. Uh, I hope to have you back in the next class in 30 minutes. Thank you Sarah for moderating and assisting. I hope to see you in the next class as well. Um, in the next class students, we will be looking at listening parts three and four, the more challenging parts of listening. In the break, in the meantime, check out aehelp.com and check out for general IELTS, gieltshelp.com. Sign up for those premium packages. Get yourself learning from good materials. Attend these classes and you're golden, everybody. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out for now and I'll be back soon in about 25 minutes. Goodbye.